this person told me, why can't you just forget? I mean, you cannot just forget about what happened in residential school. You're scarred. Women fleeing abusive relationships often end up in this room at the Awatan Healing Lodge and Emergency Shelter in Calgary. It's a comfortable place to sit down and speak with staff. But in this case, it's the support worker who's telling me her story about the abuse she suffered while attending residential schools. Jackie Bromley tends to the small garden of sage and sweetgrass that she uses for smudging ceremonies with clients. But it wasn't until seven years ago when she started working here that she realized the tradition was helping her with the lasting impacts of residential schools. I used to see a lot of my friends going through, I believe it would be sexual abuse, because the nuns would take them from the dorm where we're at, they would take them into a room. She was taken from her grandparents' home on the Blood Reserve in southern Alberta at age seven and says it filled her with anger and with a severe hostility towards authority figures. Josie Nipanak is a fourth generation residential school survivor who now heads the women's shelter. She recalled keeping younger children quiet when they would speak their language when nuns were around. That was the beginning of my own advocacy. Uh, as, as a five-year-old because at that time we had no recourse as uh, residential school kids. We had nowhere to go. We had no one to tell because no one would listen. The pair says they're moving forward with their work and personal lives in a positive way. And as they watched Canadians honour survivors during Orange Shirt Day events that began last week, Nipanak finds solace knowing people will hear their stories of survival. That's my comfort is that there will never be another residential school to hurt any more children in this country. In Calgary, Crystal Ladaris, City News.